Section 55 of Poems by Kerr, Ellis, and Acton Bell by Charlotte, Emily, and Anne Bronte. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Views of Life by Anne Bronte When sinks my heart in hopeless gloom, and life can show no joy for me, and I behold a yawning tomb where bowers and palaces should be, in vain you talk of morbid dreams, in vain you gaily smiling say, That what to me so dreary seems, The healthy mind deems bright and gay. I too have smiled and thought like you, But madly smiled and falsely deemed. Truth led me to the present view, I'm waking now, t'was then I dreamed. I lately saw a sunset sky, And stood in rapture to behold, Its varied hues of glorious dye, First, fleecy clouds of shining gold. These blushing took a rosy hue, Beneath them shone a flood of green, Nor less divine the glorious blue That smiled above them and between. I cannot name each lovely shade, I cannot say how bright they shone, But one by one I saw them fade, And what remained when they were gone. Dull clouds remained of somber hue, and when their borrowed charm was o'er, The azure sky had faded too, That smiled so softly bright before. So, gilded by the glow of youth, Our very life looks fair and gay, And so remains the naked truth When that false light is passed away. Why blame you, then, my keener sight, That clearly sees a world of woes, Through all the haze of golden light That flattering falsehood round it throws? When the young mother smiles above her firstborn darling of her heart, her bosom glows with earnest love while tears of silent transport start. Fond dreamer, little does she know the anxious toil, the suffering, the blasted hopes, the burning woe, the object of her joy will bring. Her blinded eyes behold not now what, soon or late, must be his doom. The anguish that will cloud his brow, The bed of death, the weary tomb. As little know the youthful pair, In mutual love supremely blessed, What weariness and cold despair, Ere long will seize the aching breast. And even should love and faith remain, The greatest blessings life can show, Amid adversity and pain, To shine throughout with cheering glow, they do not see how cruel death comes on, Their loving hearts to part. One feels not now the gasping breath, The rending of the earth-bound heart. The soul's and body's agony, Ere she may sink to her repose, The sad survivor cannot see The grave above his darling clothes. Nor how, despairing and alone, He then must wear his life away, And linger feebly toiling on, and fainting sink into decay. Oh, youth may listen patiently, while sad experience tells her tale, but doubt sits smiling in his eyes, for ardent hope will still prevail. He hears how feeble pleasure dies, by guilt destroyed and pain and woe. He turns to hope, and she replies, Believe it not, it is not so. Oh, heed her not, experience says, For thus she whispered once to me, She told me in my youthful days How glorious manhood's prime would be, When, in the time of early spring, To chill the winds that o'er me passed, She said each coming day would bring A fairer heaven, a gentler blast. And when the sun too seldom beamed, The sky or cast too darkly frowned, the soaking rain too constant streamed, And mist too dreary gathered round. She told me summer's glorious ray Would chase those vapors all away, And scatter glories round With sweetest music fill the trees, Load with rich scent the gentle breeze, And strew with flowers the ground. But when beneath that scorching ray I languished weary through the day, While birds refused to sing, 
verdure decayed from field and tree, And panting nature mourned with me the freshness of the spring. Wait but a little while, she said, till summer's burning days are fled, And autumn shall restore with golden riches of her own. And summer's glories mellowed down the freshness you deplore. And long I waited, but in vain, that freshness never came again. Though summer passed away, though autumn's mists hung cold and chill, And drooping nature languished still, and sank into decay. Till wintry blasts foreboding blew through leafless trees, And then I knew that hope was all a dream. But thus, fond youth, she cheated me, And she will prove as false to thee, the sweet her words may sing. Stern prophet, cease thy bodings dire, Thou canst not quench the ardent fire That warms the breast of youth. Oh, let it cheer him while it may, And gently, gently die away, Chilled by the damps of truth. Tell him that earth is not our rest, Its joys are empty frail at best, And point beyond the sky, But gleams of light may reach us here, and hope the roughest path can cheer, then do not bid it fly. Though hope may promise joy, that still unkindly time will ne'er fulfill, or, if they come at all, we never find them unalloyed, hurtful, perchance, or soon destroyed. They vanish, or they pall. Yet hope itself a brightness throws, o'er all our labors and our woes, while dark foreboding care a thousand ills will oft pretend, That providence may ne'er intend the trembling heart to bear. Or if they come and oft appears, our woes are lighter than our fears, And far more bravely borne, then let us not enhance our doom, But e'en in midnight's blackest gloom expect the rising morn. Because the road is rough and long, shall we despise the skylark's song? That cheers the wanderer's way, or trample down with reckless feet the smiling flowerets bright and sweet because they soon decay? Pass pleasant scenes and notice by because the next is bleak and drear, or not enjoy a smiling sky because a tempest may be near? No, while we journey on our way, we'll smile on every lovely thing, and ever as they pass away, to memory and hope will cling. And though that awful river flows Before us when the journeys pass, Perchance of all the pilgrim's woes, Most dreadful, shrink not, tis the last. Though icy cold and dark and deep, Beyond it smiles that blessed shore, Where none shall suffer, none shall weep, And bliss shall reign forevermore. End of section 55